major news for the 2012 Koyala Grand Prix is that the track has undergone some changes. Turns 2 and Madigan has been widened just a little bit, the there's some extra runoff over there. In particular, those tire walls in the Madigan corner and the run down to Cirola Park, uh, have, there's an Armco Bay around those tire walls, it's still pretty much a soft wall, but um, you have to realize that uh, those tire walls are a little bit of a pain for the safety crews to get back in place after someone would hit them. And also the, the run from turn 6 to 7, there's a bit of extra runoff there, thankfully, that's been a bit overdue I think. On the competition side of things, the MCMA's appeal to have some cars locked into the race was thrown out, thankfully and predictably. And also, the strength of the Kayala one-off teams, in particular teams from Finland and Sweden, and a couple from Germany as well, has been staggering. One-off teams make up half the field for today's race, which should make things very unpredictable. Going to head off to Dan, who will take you through the starting grid and the race. Thank you, Lance. We'll go through the starting grid from the back to the front. 21 rows, 42 cars will start the Carnival Grand Prix for 2012. Starting in last position in 42nd place is car number 80 driven by Yevgeny Kuznetsov, driving the car that was qualified by his teammate Lev Azarov on pole day. On his inside is Chris Johans in car 64, having a difficult season so far. He's dropped out of four of the six races this season. Outside row 20, Zach Duff, also having a difficult season in the Xenos. And on his inside, in car number 3, Luciano Savaral, we're very surprised to see him very far back on the grid. On the outside of row 19 is Arto Kekin, and a former winner of the race. Arto also struggled a bit in time trials, he only lines up in 38. On his inside is Yamino Tenshi in the DeGarmo 25 car, and right in front of her on the outside of row 18 is Zelda Ashby, her teammate. On Ashby's inside is Davina Henton in car number 6, making her first start here in the Volpe. And on the outside of row 17, Scott Bates in the car number 88 for Team EFR. On Bates' inside is Alina Vario, the former journalist who became a racing driver. She impressed last year. We'll see what she can do from the back in the Sylvan car. On the outside of row 16 is Jens Dahlgren for the Baltic Motorsports team. Underfunded operation there. And on his inside is Friedrich Jaeger, a touring car legend in the Vernstrom. This is Vernstrom's first Master Cup start. And we're happy to have them on board. On the outside of row 15 is Danny Savin, a former two-time winner of the race, the only man to win it back-to-back. -back. On the inside of row 15 is Carlos Donzello in the Fintech in car 21. Marcus Leonard starts 28th on the outside of row 14. He's had a difficult season in that Xenos, but Leonard hopes to charge to the front. And on his inside is Stefan Halvari driving for TH Racing. That team came second here a couple years ago. On the outside of row 13 is Matthias Taub, a former winner of the race in his Gessler. Taub was very quick in the final practice session. Look out for this 10 car. On the inside of row 13 is Lev Vladimirovich Polzin in the only Tolyadi in the field. On the outside of row 12, Lewis Kingston in car 17, the only Nomoto in today's race. And on his inside is Hans Eichel in the Black Diamond car. Beautiful livery on this car. Eichel is a former Formula A driver. On the outside of row 11 is Michael Sykes. Having a very unlucky season so far driving for Flash Racing. And on his inside is Adrian Devereaux, the championship leader, who has had a very difficult run here in the past. On the outside of row 10 is Mika Pasanen driving for World Sport. And on his inside is former two-time winner of the race, Leonid Roderick, in car number 4. On the outside of row 9 is Vladimir Simonov, almost won this race a couple years ago. And on his inside is Matty Alanko making his debut in this race. On the outside of row 8, Scott Stoidler, one of his better qualifying runs here, I believe. And on his inside is four-time world champion Peter Short in car number 03. Kevin Dwyer is on the outside of row 7. His father won this race four times. And on his inside is Yulia Nasova, the only woman to win this race as a rookie. On the outside of row 6 is Antiro Vertinen, who ran here last year for Palmer Styles. And on the inside of row 6 is Mika Turvo, who came second here a few years ago. On the outside of row 5 is Chris Davenport, the Volpe test driver, makes his first start in this race. And the slowest car in time in a pole day, Larson Jensen, driving for Black Storm Motorsports. On the outside of row 4 is Esko Kaskela, the other TH Racing car. Look out for him today. And Yunus Hanula did not qualify last year. He starts for Christian Kalela's team this year. On the outside of row 3, Yuho Kavela, the Flash Racing third driver, usually starts this race uh, only. And Brian Sendak almost won this race a few years ago on the inside of row 3. Outside of row 2 is Andreas Ringdahl driving for Schoelberg. This is a very controversial paint job in that car. And his teammate, Alvar Setterberg, 
on the inside of row two. The outside of the front row is the very controversial Manticore M1A1 of Eric Bolander in car number 26 and taking out the Delano Pole Award. For the very first time at this race, Alexis Rainsford, the champ car driver, makes her, front, her first appearance of the season and her only scheduled Master Cup start of the 2012 season. And here's the rather sizable list of drivers that did not qualify or pre-qualify in this list. Some big names here, Martinez, Alan Hodges is on this list, uh, Charlie Waters, Craig Mummer, Dale Roswell, Morgan Hamburg, Greg Woodard, Tom Delgado, Dan Lecklider. A lot of names you probably didn't recognize because uh, they were only attempting this race, but anyway, Alexis Rainsford and Eric Bolander in the two Manicore cars on the front row. Why are these cars so controversial? Well, they have uh, Colt Morrell engines in these cars, hence the sponsorship on the 20s. Oh, Bolander's in trouble! I'll get back to why they're controversial in a minute, but Eric Bolander in one of the two Manicore cars is in trouble! Now... I was just talking about the Colt Morrell engines in these cars, and I appear to have just jinxed him. Oh, well, Bolander has got a problem. He's definitely got a problem, and this is going to cause a huge jam up into turn one at Cariala, where we've usually had problems. Look out, look out, look out, look out. Oh, we got four or five wide. Oh, Tenchi's around. Savaral's around. They're both off the course. There's a... I think we got more problems up ahead. We'll get everything as we can see it here. Yeah, definite jam up there. Ashby pulls out a line and tries to slip into the middle, but Tenchi just had a run. Get, uh, takes Savarol off the course as well, and if you're behind the eight ball early, very little chance you have of catching back up. Uh, anyway, especially if you're this far behind the eight balls, they've got damage. Uh, almost wipe out the brake marker there. Tenchi and Savarol off the course. Luciano gets that car uh, back on course. Um, beats Eric Bullender back to the pit lane. But anyway, here's uh, the other trouble. Kevin Dwyer pushes wide into Mika Turvo. There's cars off the course. Brian Sendak. Oh, we got a big pile of Turvos upside down. Car number 20 is upside down. I don't really know how that happened. Anyway, here's another look at it. Looks like just five wide in there. And he touched tires with Brian Sendak's car. Landed on top of the 90 car. And that just rolled him over. Tenshi didn't see him through all that. All that smoke hit him. And Luciano hits the 25 again. So, uh, Yamino Tenchi and Luciano Savaral in trouble again. Here's Zach Duff, car number five. He's uh, trying to get around Zelda Ashby in the 55. Brian Sendak in the 90 car. Anyway, Duff's trying to go around three wide. Sendak not playing nice with Ashby. Tries to force Ashby out wide. Doesn't realize that he just shoved the five car off the track. Um, well, no penalty was assessed for that move. I'm... You can argue that there was. Here's Hans Eichel and Peter Short, former teammates in Formula A. However, Eichel's run ends... Well, that's early to end. Uh, the SAR engine inside the Black Diamond Omega gives up on, well, lap one. Kind of embarrassing. Uh, that's a very nice-looking car. Here's Danny Saab in the 81 car and the Vernstrom, driven by Friedrich Jaeger. These two have been racing very aggressively in lap one. Oh, I just jinxed him. Saban's off the course. Jaeger hits him in the... Wow! The sloped front end on the uh, Vernstrom hit the back of Sava, and Sava went on, almost on top of the tires there. Both of them were out, but that was a scary incident at the end of the first lap. Alexis Rainsford pulled out a sizable lead after lap one. Here's Chris Davenport, um, Rainsford's, part, uh, Rainsford's emotional partner, I think that's the best way I can put it. Going wide, he's, he's really been known for his reckless defending during this weekend. Uh, and this week, rather. In all the qualifying sessions, Davenport's car was known for being very, very, um, wide. Here's the unluckiest driver of the year, uh, Michael Sykes in car number 44. He's been one of the quick drivers and one of the threats to win just about every single race this year. But, uh, he does not have any results to show for it this season, and that's, uh, a travesty. Here's, uh, Adrian Devereaux back in 18th place. Um, he's trying to get around Lewis Kingston. Kevin Dwyer doing a bit, uh, bit of landscaping here in the 72 car. Dwyer tries to defend, but Devereaux is already there. Dwyer wisely lets him go by. Here's the Dwyer S, named for his famous father, Benny. Devereaux tries to cross over. Kingston's off the course. Devereaux slides wide. He's got made contact with the 34 of Mattia Lanko. Devereaux into the wall, and he's out after lap. After, well, he's completed one lap. Lap two, the, the points leader, Adrian Devereaux, is out. Kingston gets it really hot through the Dwyer S. Devereaux does a crossover to get around him. He slides the rear end. When he collects it, the 34 is there. Devereaux into the wall. Really nothing anyone could do. A frustrated Adrian Devereaux through the steering wheel against the dashboard. And, uh, well, 
I didn't really want to talk to anybody. Now, lap three, Alexis Rainsford built up that lead. There's the running order on the uh, left side. Uh, we'll use this to keep a bit, uh, make things a bit easier keeping track of everyone here. Uh, instead of waiting for everyone to cross the line as we have done in the past. Now, the Manicor M1A1 is a bit of a controversial car because they've used a lot of the Colton Royal Altair's test data in developing this car. Here's Chris Davenport in the 28 car. Whoa, whoa, hang on to it, hang on to it. He's way off in the mallet uh, carousel corner at the end of the track. And back on, oh, look out. Oh, whoa, Mika Pasanen and Leonard Roderick almost taken out by Chris Davenport. Now, this 28 car has been way, way out of hand in the first lap, first couple laps here. Michael Sykes pouncing on this in the uh, 44 car. Davenport. He's already all over the place. This car not handling too well, but uh, I'll have to see uh, how long that excuse is bought. Um, anyway, here's the battle for second place. That is Andres Ringdahl and Yuho Cavella, two very unfamiliar names. The Schoberg cars uh, have a very controversial livery. Yuho Cavella is 25 years old from uh, not t from uh, around this area. He's a rally driver. He's competed in a lot of international rally competitions, and he's done fairly well. Andres Ringdahl, he's a 38-year-old, hence the uh, number on that car. He's a touring car driver in the Scandinavian Championships, and occasionally he's run in, uh, in England. But uh, Ringdahl's mostly known for owning a uh, Swedish hockey club, uh, more than his uh, touring car prowess. Uh, this step, this Yuka Vale is power sliding all over the place now. And he's just hanging on to that thing. Look at that. That 04 car. He's really. You want to talk about what uh, skills people learn doing rally. There you go. Yuka Vale has mastered the art of the power slide this week. This 04 car, he just had the rear end hanging out. Uh, most of the practice sessions. It's been very fun to watch, but uh, at least he's not spinning out all over the place. Larson Jensen in the 99 car and Arto Kakinen in car number 9 hit on lap. Four. Now remember, Jose Luis Martinez almost won France using a very uh, different pit strategy. And, uh, well, that uh, looks like that could be what they have in mind. Alexis Rainsford has already encountered the tail-enders. That is Yamino Tenchi, although that's not really a tail-ender. She's caught on speed alone. Tenchi kind of uh, has had multiple problems, and I believe is... Uh, no, she has not visited the pit lane yet, so I don't know why they haven't brought the 25 car in. Battle for second is heated up again. Cavella on the inside of Ringdahl. Now, Andres Ringdahl and Yuho Cavella are... Two. Whoa! Yuho Cavella sliding that car wide, but Andres Ringdahl in particular is one of the many uh, one-off drivers here that has had several laps of uh, testing here. This third, That 38 car, now you'll notice uh, those really small numbers not to, on that car on the doors. Not many people are fond of that. Oh! Ringdahl's hooked Cavella, Cavella into the fence, and if there's something... That's not, people aren't going to be too fond of it's when you do moves like that. Now, Ringdahl's had a lot of testing here at this racetrack, so his speed isn't entirely a surprise, but um, I would have thought he would have had a bit more courtesy than, oh, Pasan and Inverton and have a uh, contact in the back. Yeah, I saw that uh, time penalty to Ringdahl coming. Uh, he didn't qualify for this race last year driving for a different team, but he came here with the Schoberg team, and... Uh, He's doing a very, uh, well, he was doing a very good job up until that. Well, this race could be a bit of an endurance race here. And uh, he might be able to make up some ground based on other people dropping out. Eric Bolander has gotten the 26 car back in the game. However, he is two laps down to the leader. Don't think they're going to make that up. But, uh, like I said earlier, if there are enough retirements, there is a possibility he could sneak a point or two in. Kevin Dwyer, car number 72, the great American hope for this race. His goes up in smoke on lap 5. His father, Benny, is the only four-time winner of the race. In fact, Benny Dwyer is the only driver to have won this race more than twice. So uh, his son, Kevin, out early. It's the second time in three Cariola starts that Kevin Dwyer has gone out very early on. Carlos Donzello and Lewis Kingston are battling for 22nd. And oh, they made contact and both are off the course. Well, that developed kind of early. These two have been very aggressively, um, they've been breaking very late for some of these corners. You saw King someone off the road here. Donzello's got the line to the Dwyer S, but he slides that car, almost wrecks it. When he gathers it back up, the 17 had a great run through, and they just made contact, went off the course. Not really a whole lot more you can say about that. 
Marcus Leonard in the uh, triple nine car is pitting very early on. That, I'm not sure, is scheduled. Andres Ringdahl, he wasn't playing nice with Yuho Kivela, and uh, he might be using some of those um, skills he learned from his hockey players around the back markers as he just kind of shoved the 25 off the course a little bit there. Scott Stoidler is the big mover now. He is up to fourth place. He's taken up the status of the uh, next big American hope, I believe, after Kevin Dwyer uh, kind of dropped out of the race. The 74 car, drug run by the Mitchell and Sons team. Whoa, look out, look out, look out, look out. Well, get it back going. There we go. Yeah, there. Whoa, you Kavala in that 04 car. That car was dead sideways, and he saved it. You Kavala is going to make the early part of this race very, very exciting, even if they go single file. Um, here is the, uh, that's the other Schoberg car. That's uh, Setter, Alvar Setterberg, who also failed to qualify for this race last year. Uh, Setterberg, 32 years old, hence the number on that car from uh, Sweden. And here is Jens Dahlgren in car number uh, 96, the Baltic car. As Silva lose, lose the run of that car, hooks the back on the 96 car, and uh, shoves him kind of rudely out of the way. Um, well, the Russian driver won this race as a rookie, but that didn't exactly earn uh, too much respect from the 96 camp. Zelda Ashby in the 55 car is out with engine failure. So Ashby will bring the 55 car into the pit lane and, of course, into the garage. The 96 car of Jens Dahlgren also out of the race. Mario Lanko in car number 34 has never started a Master Cup Series race before. However, he has run uh, well over the race distance here in testing, and that's how you don't pass a back marker. I think Yamino Tenshi was just getting a little tired and shoved out of the way by some of the, the front run. Oh, no. Michael Sykes. Well, we haven't seen this happen every race. Something going wrong with Michael Sykes in the 44 car. His rotten luck continues. He's out very early on in car 44. Peter Short, the four-time Formula A world champion. And Chris Johans doing uh, battling for position. Johans just chops off Short, I think, a little bit late. And both of them go out. Very unfortunate. It's a great pleasure to have a man with Peter Short's uh, reputation in this race. But... Uh, Looked like Johans made the move stick. He might have lost the rear end, tried to correct it, but Peter Short was already there. Eh, well, that just takes two more uh, very good cars out because both of them were coming towards the front. We have a very good battle here for fourth place. Vladimir Simonov in the 78, Scott Thorler in the 74, and Esko Koskela in the 77. That team came second here with Mika Turvo a couple years ago. Stoiler's never really done well here, but uh, this season's been a big uh, change of form for that 74 team. Stoidler trying to get around Simonov, and ah, trying to make Simonov, uh, pressure Simonov into a mistake there. Took a bit of a swipe at him. Simonov made that mistake. Stoidler's going to get the spot. Well, how does, we're going to see if uh, Simonov's going to try to take the place back. He hooks the back of Stoidler. They're going into the wall. Both of them into the wall there. Um, on the inside of 12, and Stoidler's off the course there. Both of them are out. Simonov and Stoidler out from, a top, from the top five. That's not going to make, uh, that's definitely going to be some hot tempers over there. And we've got uh, Larson Jensen has just been tripped over by Zach Duff in 26th place. Jensen's off the lead lap, but uh, Marcus Leonard and Zach Duff were on the lead lap. And uh, you know, Zach Duff has problems with the 99 and the triple nine is teammate. Um, well, uh, not really sure his mistake that was. Brian Sendak fits the 90 car from 18th place. And... Uh, Ringdahl is, well, he's got an active time penalty. I'm not sure he knows how these work, but Yuho Cavale is finally getting around him. This 04 car, by the way, is at the second fastest lap of the race. No surprise, Alexis Rainsford holds the fastest lap of the race. Cavale pits on the end of lap 11 in car number uh, 04. Now, Marcus Leonard has been dreadfully slow hanging around on the racing line. Matthias Taub uh, doesn't think too, nice, think too much of that and punts Marcus Leonard out of the way. The two Kalela cars and Mika Pasanen into the pit lane along with both the Schoberg cars. And here's Chris Davenport. And looks, uh, looks like we got more heroics from him. He's running in 20th place. Okay. It looks like, uh, I don't know if the brakes are already wearing out in the 28 car. I hope not. Uh, otherwise, this could be a very long day for Davenport as he pits on uh, lap 11. Alexis Rainsford, uh, Davenport's girlfriend, is currently leading the race. She pits at the end of lap 12. Rainsford really running unopposed here. She won this race last year. 
Uh, Matthias Taub, Leonard Roderick also pitting the end of lap 12. Uh, Marcus Leonard's damage is terminal that he received from Matthias Taub and his teammate Zach Duff. Here's Arto Kekkonen in car number 9, trying to make a move around Esko Koskela for second. And there, wow, Arto Kekkonen around the outside through Sorolla Park makes that very easy. Arto Kekkonen now in second place. And he's going to try to make a run on Alexis Reigns, where he's actually quicker than the 27 car at the moment. Here's the 04 car. This man should open up a drifting school or do something like that. Whoa, that's a bit wide. That's pushing it too hard. Yuho Cavela almost wrecks the car there, but uh, gathers it up and um, keeps going. Now, Alvar Sederberg hooks Matthias Taub, and Taub goes around in the 10 car. Oh, dear. Matthias Taub, one of the more popular drivers here, that goes without saying. Time penalty, car 32. There you have it. So, can't say I'm surprised. Anyway, Arto Kekkonen pits the 9 car. He is on a different pit strategy. Alexis Rainford is now coming to lap uh, Luciano Salvaro. Whoa, 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 hang on to it, hang on to it. There we go. Alexis Rainford almost threw that car off the track. She's made a habit of doing that in Champ Car this year. Uh, she's had uh, several good qualifying efforts and several good runs, but I think she's retired from all but one race this year. Uh, has not yet scored a point over there. Yevgeny Kuznetsov is currently running in the top 10. He'll run the next race, the round of Russia, in the number 19 car for Black Diamond Racing. And uh, as we look into next season, Cats of Engineering has expressed an interest in hiring him. However, I think that's precedent on either Kuznetsov bringing a bucket load of cash or him winning the Arla Championship. Not sure uh, the latter is possible, but anyway, here's uh, Yuho Kavela. Leonard Roderick, his teammate, uh, doesn't exactly give him a, bit, a lot of room, but if you saw how much uh, Kavela missed the corner by, uh, didn't look like he had many options. Uh, here is Kuznetsov in the 80 cars. He enters the battle here now in that 80 car. Now here is uh, Ringdahl again, and uh, Mika Pasanen in the 290 car having a fantastic run. Ringdahl almost... Uh, Pulls a Chris Davenport and decides to hit that wall there. Ringdahl would be in third place, but uh, he's actually back in 18th. As you see, Pasanen take the place. To, well, it would have been third if he didn't get that time penalty. Oh, don't compound your time penalties by hitting more people there, but uh, that was instant karma. Alexis Rainsford has come across uh, Yamino Tenshi again, and uh, she showed no patience with the back markers at all. But then again, Tenshi was kind of all over the place in the... Um, that 25 car and Rainsford clearly did not want to lose any more time. Tenshi goes out of the race and I think that's kind of, uh, well, putting her out of her and everyone else's misery at the point, at the moment. Davina Henton is one of the big movers. She's up in the top 10. That is Antiro Vertanen in that uh, beautiful 51 car right there. Another nice livery on that 6 car and that 80 car. If you have Jenny Kuznetsov, what we're looking at right now, however, he's going to put some sand on it. <clears throat> Thank you. That car was nice looking. We didn't need sand on it. Uh, so, anyway, Kuznetsov, a former rally driver, probably is, uh, he doesn't have too many problems running on the sand, but that's not what you want to be doing right now. Here's Alina Vario running in 11th place. She dazzled here last year, had a very strong run. The, uh, former, the, uh, former racing, actually, she still is a racing journalist and occasional driver, having a very strong run here as she runs 11th. Henson makes a move on Kivela in the 04 car. That's another nice paint job in the uh, 04 car. Wonder if Lon shouldn't just put that uh, livery on the uh, on one of their regular cars for once, because that 04 car is uh, pretty nice, pretty easy on the eyes. <clears throat> Stefan Halvari having a good run in the TH car as we are on lap 18. He's running in ninth place, and uh, this TH racing team only runs this race. Uh, they don't have a huge amount of money, but it looks like this year they have more than usual because they were able to uh, fund a second car and a fair amount of testing here. Looks like all that's paid off. That's some good investments. TH Racing running very well. Maybe they'll be full-time uh, if they're interested. They, here they may be going to Dash Cup Racing, which is sort of like these cars, only they run in Europe. Davina Henton in the Volpe is really flying. In lap 19... She's going around the outside of Leonid Roderick in car number four in Sorolla Park. We've seen a lot of really fast cars pull that move off. Um, and here's more from the Yuho Cabela School of Drifting and almost wrecking the car but saving it. 
Cabello is making an art of this. I wonder if he's just, try he's just trying to get in the highlight reel as much as possible at this point. Henson pits on the end of lap 19 in car number 6. And following her, Stefan Halvari in the 97 car. Kuznetsov in as well. Uh, here is the uh, 77 car of Esco Cascella as he tries to pass Larson Jensen and Luciano Savarol. And, oh, Jensen comes back. Oh, Luciano didn't give him enough room. Cascella in trouble. The 77 car, second place. Cascella in trouble. Cascella, it looks like he just got taken out by two lap cars who weren't really paying much attention to who was there. And Esco goes off the course in that 77 car. The TH Racing crew have got to be furious about this one. They have every right to be. I don't think a time penalty was assessed. No, no time penalty assessed. I don't don't understand that. That seems to be an insane thing not to do. Mika Pasanen has emerged as the chief challenger due to the manicor driven by Alexis Rainsford. But keep in mind, there's some people on some very radical strategies that might catch up to him in the long term. Here is uh, uh, Yunus Hanula, and he's, he's looking at uh, Cascella there, and he's subscribing to the Yuho Cavela School of Drifting in order to catch him. Uh, that 59 car is sliding around. Ringdahl in the 38 car, and Cascella pit after 21 laps. Looks like Cascella figured it's uh, not worth staying out there. Uh, Chris Davenport again. Let me guess. Yep, yeah, yeah, there we go. Uh, saw that coming. Mika Pawson and uh, Alvar Sederberg and Yuho Cavella pit on lap 22. Cavella with no real rear end on that 04 car. Looks like both the Kalela cars are coming in as well. Yep, there they are. Well, more Chris Davenport. He has the third quickest lap of the race, believe it or not. But he's not going to be able to make use of all that speed he's got if he keeps throwing it off every other lap. I mean, it's... I mean, Davenport off again! I mean, Chris Davenport's really been um, uh, erratic, to say the least, but he you can't say he's not fast, but uh, he's just got to kind of cool it down a little bit. That's really the only way you're going to win a 62-lap race uh, here at Cariala. Alexis Rainsford um, has gotten around the 77 car, putting the lap down, but she hits the pit lane on lap 24. Great fuel economy there by the... Uh, Manicor team there by Manicor Engineering. Chris Davenport is now finally going to come into the pits. And he gets... Wow! He hit the pit wall! Davenport just hit the pit wall! Well, fortunately for everyone else, suspension damage uh, to that 28 car finally takes him out of the race. Leonid Roderick pits from second place. Now, lap 27. Alexis Rainsford has her teammate, Eric Bolander, directly behind her. Now, I wonder if Manicor Engineering uh, won't tell Bolander to just sit behind Rainsford and just block everyone else. I know Alexis Rainsford is no uh, fan of team orders, but uh, sometimes it's not always the driver's call. Alarjo Kekin pits on the end of lap 27 from third place, and he brings car number 9 back on track. As I mentioned before, Roderick is one of only a few car drivers who have won this race twice. Only Benny Dwyer has won this race more than twice. He's won it four times. The late Benny Dwyer won his very last start here in 2000, but Leonid Roderick in car number four is having a very strong run today. Well, the, our Russian fans are probably excited to see this. Here is Yevgeny, uh, Yevgeny Kuznetsov was uh, auditioning for the Tolyatis, didn't get him, as that's what I was going to mention, that uh, he almost was able to snag the Tolyati ride for this race, but uh, Lev Vladimirovich pulls in uh, another famous Russian. A rally driver as he's going to go around Yulia Nasova. Now, when we saw Lev Vladimirovich Polzin make his debut a couple years ago, did anyone really think that he was going to end up uh, racing this cleanly and this well at the Cariola Grand Prix? I certainly didn't. Here he is. That's Alina Vario in the 35 Sylvan racing car right in front of him. Uh, Vario having a very solid run along with uh, Vladimirovich. Now, it uh, looks like Vario pulling away from... Uh, Lev Vladimirovich a bit, or maybe Vladimirovich is backing it down, just uh, letting the race come to him. 97 car in. He is, that's a puncture on that car, and they're going to adjust the strategy accordingly. Hmm. Roderick off course a bit in car four. Then is Vertinen, and the 99 car of Larson Jensen, who's I think three or four laps down, so Roderick wisely lets him go. If you see a messed up rear end like that, you might as well let him go. Lap 30, Alexis Rainsford has a 22-second lead 
but she's been very slow coming in and out of the pit lane. Uh, she's getting around Yuho Kavela in car number 04. She's thoroughly dominated this race. Uh, no one's really had anything for this 27 car. And, oh, Rainford slides it wide. She slides it wide. That's very slow. Is there a problem? Oh, no! Rainsford's in trouble! The 27 car, the mana car, which has dominated this race. There's a problem. Not just a little problem, but a big, big problem. That is definitely going to take her out of the lead. She pulls that car off to the side, uh, off to the side of the track, gets it refired eventually, but it's long after Mika Pasanen has taken the lead. Mika Pasanen. Has anyone heard of this guy in America beforehand? Probably not too many people. But Mika Pasanen in this 290 car is now leading the race in his first Master Cup start. This race has never been won by a debut driver. That is a driver making their first Master Cup start in this race. A debut driver has never won. In fact, the last time a debut driver won was James West a couple years ago. Henson Pitts at halfway, lap 31. Arto Kakinen is still the theoretical joker in the deck, meaning Arto Kakinen is gonna be the car to watch. We're not entirely sure where his strategy could land him. By my calculations, he might, he's definitely going to have to go in fuel save mode. Scott Bates in the 88 car challenging Arto Kekkonen in the 9. What have I said? If Arto is able to pull off his fuel game, then this could be a very, very big day from 38 on the grid. Yulina Sova, car number 8. Uh, I think she's behind one of the guests. There's Brian Sendak, and she slows down suddenly. No, that's actually uh, uh, Vario, the uh, 35 car. Neely Nasova goes out of the race in the uh, car number 8, unfortunately. Uh, she had a very strong run going. Yuho Cavela's had a very difficult race. He's had some slow pit stops, saw some power slides, but that's uh, the end of his day. He's been very, very fast here as well, and that's a real big shame to see him go out because he was making things very, very exciting. Not just with all of his uh, sliding all over the place, but he has been very, very brave as well. And I think a big round of applause needs to go out to Yuho Cavell for putting on a hell of a show. Mika Pasanen in on lap 32. He's going to give Yunus Hanula the lead in the uh, 59 car. But uh, Hanula gives that up immediately afterwards, and he pits after, uh, well, not even leading a lap. His teammate, Antero Vertinen, looks like he's following suit. Roderick is now on point with Alina Vario running in second, and she hits the pit lane. Car 35, Alina Barrio. <clears throat> well, Vladimirovich and the Toliatis had a very solid run, a very strong run, very calm, measured run. However, that, as you see, a big cloud of smoke coming out of the back of the 85 car, signals that is the end for the Toliati. And if you've been watching this series for a while, you'll know that a Toliati blowing up is not a surprise. Leonid Roderick in car number four is in the lead of the race. 13 cars are on the lead lap. We're on lap 36 of 62. Cars uh, running in 14th through 18th are one lap down. And you'll see them in just a minute. There they are. Luciano Salveral heads uh, the cars one lap down. And uh, everyone behind them is two or more laps down. And yes, they're not. those aren't lying to you. There are only 20 cars running. Alexis Rainsford is still in the race. She's a lap down, but... Uh, just wonder what could be if the Manicor had just held together. And uh, I'm, they weren't saying what the problem was. Rainsford got it going again, and um, she's setting fastest lap. Uh, she's the fastest car on the racetrack, but uh, she's that. She's way too far back, I think, to be uh, to make an impression on the leaders. Arto Kekkonen is now a threat for the win on his strategy. Uh, from 38th on the grid, which I, which would be an amazing effort if he was able to pull it off. The furthest back on the grid this race has ever been won from was was in 2000 when Benny Dwyer won this race from 31st. So, Ardo Kakinen could be looking at history here. Leonid Roderick in car number 4 looks like he's also on a bit of a strange pit strategy as he pits on lap 36. Everyone uh, back to Yunus Anula in 5th place, I think, is going to be in with a shot to win this race. So... With that being said, three of those drivers are not TM Master Cup Series regulars. Could we see a one-off driver win this race for the first time in uh, quite a while? Uh, probably since the 1980s. Here is Alina Vario in car number 35. Uh, she's had continuing to have a very strong run, 
And, uh, well, it'd be a big surprise if Varya could pull it off, but, uh, you know, I think she can do it. But here's the big star of the local drivers so far, Mika Pasanen. He's run a very measured race, and he's just sort of quietly crept on, and now he's in the lead. This 290 car, this is this team's first start, too. Uh, here is another one of the big stars of the local drivers, Eric Bolander. He's, he runs Colton Morels in the uh, in Swedish touring cars, in a Scandinavian touring cars, I should say, because the Swedish championship is uh, no longer just a Swedish championship. It kind of goes all over Scandinavia. Bolander pits the 26 car, and uh, in case anyone was wondering why he uh, got the uh, drive with Manicor in the first place, it's the Colton Morel connection. Here is uh, Arto Kakinen in car number nine, former winner of the race. Yes, you can see Arto now in second place is running down Mika Pasanen in the 290. Fortunately, World Sport allowed us to put a camera on the back, and we're now looking back at Arto Kakinen as he gradually gets closer and closer in that car number nine. But here we see Arto. He's really closing in, and he dives into the pit lane. That is scheduled. But Arto Kakinen really making the most of his strategy. Oh, is more problems with Alexis Rainsford. That is a puncture, actually. She's going to get that car around to the pit lane, and they're going to, well, change tires on that car. You see Rainsford back into the fight. Car number 27. Gee, she's had a rough day. And uh, here's Mika Pasanen as he has uh, got both the Manacro cars in front of him. Oh, whoa, Bolander, that's a surprise. I don't think uh, he expected that one, but uh, lo looks like he did a fair bit to not spin out on any oil Bolander may have dropped on the racetrack and crashed into the back of him. That would have been a little embarrassing. But uh, I don't really think he has to worry about uh, catching the 27 car in front of him. I'm pretty sure Alexis Rainsford's Manicor is fast enough to just pull away from him. But Mika Pasanen in that 290 car, looks like he actually is trying to catch Rainsford, but it's not really going to work because I think that Manicor is just too fast. It's also too unreliable. So uh, you might might be better off letting it get away, and if it blows up, then you won't have, then you won't be taken by surprise. Here's Leonid Roderick sliding wide from second place. Here comes Antero Vertanen to second place. Vertanen drove for Palmer Styles in this race last year and uh, dropped down midway through the race. He is now up to second place, driving for Christian Kalela's team. That's one of the nicest deliveries of all the um, uh, one-off teams, I think. But here we are back with uh, Matthias Taub in car number 10. He's running in ninth place, and the Gessler engine gives up. It gives up the ghost. Actually, not sure if the engine's what gave out, but I'm pretty sure it is. A lot of smoke over there. Alina Vario is... Oh, no! Vario's out from fifth place on the start of her 41st lap. Oh, that's... Uh, that's got to be gut-wrenching. After completing two-thirds of the race... Vario out. Oh boy. A distraught Vario pulled that car off the pulled the Sylvan Racing Omeka off the track after a great drive. Clearly she was very upset because she put a lot of effort into this race and uh, she deserves a pat on the back for her efforts today. Alvar Setterberg, if he uh, would be in fourth place, but he has a penalty. So he's actually in about eighth or ninth place, which even still is a great run for uh, a debut driver. Leonard Roderick appears to be cognition of this because he doesn't bother fighting the 32 car. You'll see the, uh, the where the numbers were put on the doors. Now, I think the series officials are going to make a rule that you can't do that after this race. He lets the Syllogy car go by. Here's Scott Bates. We haven't really talked about him, but he's still running. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. He's having a pretty good day running in eighth place, but almost uh, got acquainted with the Armco over there. A little further back, Yevgeny Kuznetsov just pitted, and he rejoins. He's currently running in 14th place, so the popular Russian driver looks like he's going to have a, a fair amount of points after this one. Pasanen pits from the lead on lap 42, and Antiro Vertanen takes over the lead in car 51, so he gets his moment in the sun, but he pits on lap 44, relinquishing top honors. Some people go to great lengths just to make sure that they finish this race in hopes of getting some big points. Here's Luciano Savarol driving a CRO modified car. I'm not sure if this car is... Uh, the way this car looks, uh, I'm not sure if it's, it looks like a CRO modified. It really does, because... Uh, uh, but anyway, I'm not sure if this will be legal in any of the various CRO modifieds, but it looks like it. Remember, Leonid Roderick and Arto Kakinen are on a different pit strategy. Car number 9 should be in the pits within a few laps. Those are, of course, all the lead lap cars, 10 of them on the lead lap. 
Tamina Henton in the six car continuing to have a strong run. Here's the car is one lap down. Um, anyway, car 99 is four laps down. He's actually still in 18th place because he hasn't passed Lena Vario yet. Larson Jensen having a very, uh, well, long day. I think that's the best way I can describe it. Arto Kakinen is the quickest car on the track right now. Yes, even quicker than the Manicor. That's uh, very impressive, because not many people have been quicker than the Manicors ever during this, uh, well, during this week. Leonid Roderick in the lead uh, is going to pit on lap 49. Arto Kekinen in car number 9, however, notices this. The team tells him Roderick's in the pits, and they bring Arto in. I'm not sure that's a good idea, but they're rolling the dice anyway. Here is the 51 car, Antiro Vertanen. Or no, that is Vertanen, yeah, the 51 car. And uh, he's now assumed the lead of the race, I believe. And he's coming into the pit lane. And car 51 breaks the... Oh, he hit the pit wall as well! Davenport hit the pit wall, but now Vertanen's hit it! Yeah, car, car 51 hits the pit lane wall. Well... Not sure if that's going to earn him a bit of a reprimand from the stewards after the race. But anyway, Scott Bates out of the race on lap 52. Unfortunately, he's the very popular Oklahoma driver. Goes out of the race after a very good run. He's usually not gone very well here. Um, here is Esco Casquela and Yunus Anula both pitting on lap 52. Arto Kekinen, car number 9. Um, having Continuing his very strong form. That is his teammate Brian Sendak in front of him. You can tell the difference between the two. Well... Not just, uh, not just because of the number, but the roof number on Arthur's car is red. Now, uh, Mika Pasanen pits from the lead on lap 53. He is good to go to the end on fuel. Leonid Roderick? We don't know. I don't think so. Now, I honestly don't think Roderick can make it to the end on fuel, but if you see the, if you see the running order, if he can make it, he is going to win the race. Roderick has a fairly healthy lead on Pasanen, but he's got to go into fuel save mode. And Pasanen could still catch him in that time. Here's Arto Kekkonen in third place. There's really nobody within uh, 30 seconds of him. Forwards or backwards. So um, Arto Kekkonen is going to have a very lonely end of the race unless he decides to put on a race with Brian Sendak, his teammate who's a lap down, which I don't think I would do. Brian's a bit of a hard man to get by sometimes. Here's Davina Henton in car number six. And Alexis Range for the two Lynx cars right there. The sponsor, Lynx, uh, there's actually been some reports that Lynx might buy out uh, either Volpe or buy out another team so that they would actually own their own team. And uh, looks like this is going to be some good uh, some good advertising here as Lynx has both of its cars racing each other through the Dwyer S. Well, uh, I'm pretty sure that's going to appear in some Lynx ads in the near future. There you go. Yunus Anula and Leonid Roderick, uh, not really doing battle. I think that's Roderick just putting Anula a lap down. In car number 59, Hanula slowly dropping back in uh, car 59. Here is Mika Pasanen again. Now, if this is the last we see of him, I will be amazed. I'm pretty sure we'll see Pasanen in, an, in a Master Cup car in the future. Remember what happened to Arto Kekkonen's career and Matthias Taub's? Well, I have a feeling the same might happen here. Despite all of his attempts to catch Leonid Roderick, Roderick somehow held out on fuel. Oh, he just ran out as he comes to take the checkered flag. Leonard Roderick becomes only the second driver in history to win this race three times. Benny Dwyer won it four. He is the other. Roderick takes a historic third win in the 2012 Cariola Grand Prix. Mika Pasanen pat himself, should pat himself in the back after that stellar run. And Arto Kekkonen completes the podium in third. Only three series regulars finished in the top ten. Roderick Kekkonen and Davina Henton in fifth place. And uh, you'll also notice that only eight cars finished in the lead lap. Luciano Savaral brought home that very badly damaged uh, car number three home in 11th place. Now, Savaral entered this race third in the championship. That's definitely going to help his title ambitions. Alexis Rainsford, well... For only making one start, she certainly made a splash. The former two-time Master Cup champion and last year's race winner brought it home in 12th place and got pretty much every bonus point there was to get. 
Um, Brian Sendak in car number 90 also had a very impressive run. Evgeny Kuznetsov scores his first ever points. Larson Jensen in car 99 was, uh, well, way down the order. He had, he had more problems than we could talk about in a half hour. And uh, he also finished in last, 16th place out of 16 finishers. That is a record low for this race ever since, I believe, 1988. So this is definitely a very, very high attrition race. A lot of cars going out to mechanical problems more so than collisions. However, some of those mechanical problems were brought about because of collisions. See Chris Davenport, for example. This race is also the first of two double points races that the TM Master Cup Series has in its season. The other one is the round of Indianapolis later in the season, so let's have a look at how much havoc this wreaked on the championship. Well, Arto Kakinen came in this race with about a 40-point deficit. He now is about a 50-point lead over Adrian Devereaux and Leonid Roderick. Luciano Savarol drops to fourth, but he still keeps his title hopes alive. Going a bit further down, you see Mika Pasanen in his only as one start. He's all the way up to 12th in the championship. Antero Vertanen is in there. Brian Sendak. Uh, Esco Cascala, Alvar Setterberg. So, uh, that can just show you how much havoc that this race can wreak on the points uh, standings, and that just shows you why some teams go through the lengths they do just to make sure they have a good car for this race, and why some people take some very ridiculous chances just to make uh, on their cars just to make sure they can have a good day here at the Cardiola Grand Prix. On the side note, it would be nice to see some of those guys again, such as Pasanen, Vertanen, Cascala, Setterberg on a full-time basis. It would make things rather interesting. And here's how the Independence Trophy standings look. Remember, no Independence Trophy points are awarded for the two double points races or Decatur. So uh, Mika Turbo, Carlos Donzello, and Danny Sabin don't really gain a huge advantage just on the basis of qualifying for this race. Vitaly Karpinko and Ben Atkins have yet to make an Independence Trophy start. Karpinko will be showing up in the Toyati in his home race in the round of Russia, and we will be seeing Ben Atkins very soon.